Hello, welcome to You Don't Know Jack the Ride. How many of you are there? Just one player? I mean, great, only one player. Is this your first time on the Ah, yes, they always come back. May I have your name, please? Thank you. I need to remind you that your buzzer is the letter B. That's the opening bell. Loosen up your hands and get out on the floor. Culture and pop culture collide. You don't know Jack is brought to you by the man. I can buy and sell you. And now here he is, the hardest working guy in trivia. Your host, Guy Towers. Hey, welcome to the game. So oh, you got big dreams? Well, I'll try to let you down easy, okay? Let's go. What's that? A game of Jack? Now? What a capital idea. Tally-ho! Alright, the category is... No stocks between meals, you capitalist pig. Hey, you know how sometimes when you're eating chips, you come across one of those brown and green ones? You know, like an old drunk's toenail? Well, say you're enjoying a bag of ruffles when you suddenly bite into a blue chip. What's so darn special about it? Do it! Who do you think you are, anyhow? <laughs> and uh, this is what we were looking for. Blue chips are proven strong stocks, as opposed to the green chips, which are proven to keep anyone from eating them. I feel sorry for the green chips. And the category is... Capitalists love my Trump roast. Boy, that Donald Trump, he sure is a card. If Donald were a Trump card, which of these could he most likely do? Win over any card of another suit? Go for it! Win over any card? It's not like he owns the casino. He... Oh. And for those of you interested in the right answer, a Trump card will usually win over any card of another suit. Well, unless, of course, it's an Armani suit. If that... And your category is... Saving pennies in a capitalist piggy bank. Okay, do me a favor. There's this one character whose name I can't remember. You know, you know the guy. Well, when you know who I'm talking about, buzz in and type it out, okay? You know, he's a billionaire and he's a bald white guy. He appears in a Broadway musical that's also a movie, and he's seen with Punjab and Little Orphan Annie. What is this guy's name? Uh, Let's see what you got. Do your parents deserve this shame? <laughs> well, this is what you should have typed. That bald billionaire who hangs out with Punjab and Little Orphan Annie is Daddy Warbucks. And you know, he managed to do it all without pupils. How much will this one be? Time for a little roadkill. Buzz in when you see the answer that unites the two clues. Don't forget to pay attention to those correct answers so you can figure out the bonus question. Okay, floor it! Mail here, and Rogers from the 25th century. What's the connection here? Bread and 
bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all Name the Fakes? Yo Yo Tricks? Famous Rich Movie Uncle? Be wanted female version of myself. You know, it's so hard for people who are completely obsessed with making money to find time for emotional intimacy. So, um, hey, let's look at who's advertising in the classifieds this week. Let's see. No, oh, here's one. Single white male in search of single female, preferably short and Republican, who loves money as much as I do. Take it! George Jefferson. No, single white male. Single white male. Hello? <laughs> okay, are we finished? Great. Alex P. Keaton, the freakily conservative son of hippies on Family Ties. And you know, if his marriage's ratings ever start to fall, they can always have a really cute kid to bring him right back up. Get ready for... The Dow Jones Cheerleaders. Okay, 3189 bucks if you can nail this one. Uh, shall we? Which Chicago sports team could most appropriately change its name to the Chicago Falling Stock Markets? It's yours if you want it. No, the market is bullish when it has one stock that plays amazingly and one stock that kicks the traders in the blue chips. And this would be the right answer. A falling market is called a bear market. And a receding hairline and expanding gut is called a bear's fan. How much cash? And for your viewing pleasure, was his head really made of meat? Hey, remember the British economist Thomas Malthus and his rather unusual solution for overpopulation? If Thomas Malthus were to replace Sally Struthers in her commercials for Save the Children, which of these would be the most appropriate new name for the foundation? Go for it! Eat the children? Swift move. Hey, I got a modest proposal for you. Don't buzz in unless you know the answer, okay? The correct answer is... Thomas Malthus was a 19th century Brit who believed the world's eventual overpopulation would be curtailed when famine killed off the poor. <laughs> uh. your oh yeah! Hey, nice hit, Goldfinger. All right, the category is... At least she's not selling hemp chokers. Hey, you remember that old tongue twister, Seashell Seashells by the Seashore? She sells... She well... If she sells, say, shells by the seashore, what might you hear her say? Super Do it! Say, shells is a country made up of islands. And it's where they sell rubber baby buggy bumpers. This baby's gonna be... Bonds. James Bonds. Here comes the questione. If you buy a U.S. savings James Bond, which of these actors' faces... Take it! To date, Michael Caine has never played James Bond. Because, uh, let's face it, he's not cool enough because his hair's funny. There was a yuppie, had a wad and doughy was his name, O D O U G H D O U G H D O U G H, and then his doctor's fellow. Alright, welcome to Do! Don't forget, buzz in on the first letter of the correct answer to win the cash. And the bonus is yours if you can grab all five letters. And we're off! The sugary film on a pastry! Cereal. 
Nice job, you'll get it. One more letter for the bonus. Dipping a donut in coffee is called what? Slam dunk. Woo! Dope! Nice bonus! Okay, my friend, there's your score. Uh, let's see what you can do to it. And the category is... Klondike Cat never gets his mouse. Hey, remember how that pesky mouse used to taunt Klondike Cat by saying, Savoir faire is everywhere. Suppose he said, Laissez faire is everywhere. What would he be trying to tell Klondike? It's yours if you want it. Now make mitts meat out of that answer. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Uh, loosely translated, laissez-faire means let things alone. Now, of course, if Klondike heeded that advice, there'd be no show. And then what? How can we go on with our lives, huh? It that this one will be... Roller skating at a tidy profit margin. Hey, remember those soft rockers air supply? Oh, yeah. Suppose the aging members of Air Supply decide to do an album called Air Supply and Demand. Which of these tracks would you not hear? Do it! Ooh, you're taking a loss on this exchange rate. Should have picked this one. Here I am, the socialism that you love. Air Supply and Demand is a principle of capitalism with a high voice and a big afro. Buzzer, right? You're gonna be in the money. Good luck. Let's check out that final score. El Stinko. A wise man once said, 